Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here Monday now, November 20th, 2023. On the update today, we're going to talk about severe weather and the tropics, the Atlantic Basin, doing everything it can to try to get one more name storm in there. It wants that V name, which would be Vince. It might happen, especially the area in orange. We'll talk about that. But more pressing, the severe weather threat for our friends in the Deep South today, eastern Texas, parts of Louisiana into Mississippi, and then a larger area surrounding that, where all modes of severe weather are certainly possible, even the possibility of some very strong, long-lived tornadoes. And this time of year, it gets dark earlier. It's just the way it is. And so some of this is going to persist into the evening hours. It's a very busy Monday. People are going to be out shopping, getting ready for Thanksgiving. We've got the big travel period coming up. So a lot to discuss on today's update. Let's get on with it then. First, severe weather. That is the topic today. It was in the thumbnail graphic, so let's look at it. Up close and personal now, moderate risk of severe weather now. Eastern Texas, across a good chunk of northern Louisiana and parts of southwest Mississippi. Slight risk of severe weather surrounding that. And what are the different modes here? Well, the tornado threat, that's pretty significant. I mean, there was times this severe weather season back in the spring out here. Well, it doesn't show up, Mark, because it's white. There we go. Out here in the alley that we hardly ever got a 10% day. I was out there two or three different times, I remember. Um, so when you see a 10% down here, especially in November, that is significant. Hopefully the folks down here remember their history of fall tornadoes that can be very violent and life-changing. So please pay attention. Make sure you are on top of it. Lots of distractions in the world every single hour, every second it seems. You need to be focusing on the weather today. The tornado threat is the deadliest, but the wind threat, we don't want to diminish that or make that to be like it's not a problem because it is straight line winds, downbursts from these thunderstorms that are going to develop supercell thunderstorms at that, and then the possibility of some hail, certainly not as significant. We don't have the heating to get those thunderstorms to get as tall into the atmosphere to provide the hail that we normally would see in the springtime, but the tornado and the wind threat, and then of course the very heavy rain that will fall with these systems, that will all be prevalent today. Then getting into tomorrow, the threat will shift to the east somewhat. I bet this changes a little bit over time. They always do because the weather is always changing. And then by day three, the threat of severe weather diminishes greatly, which is a good thing. That's the biggest travel day. This is Wednesday now. Eastern North Carolina, South Carolina, parts of coastal Georgia, and a chunk of northern Florida there. So looking at the High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model, or the HRRR, this is the very latest, the 18Z coming out. And it just paints the picture here of what our biggest concern is. I'll, I'll, I will outline it in red here. you got these supercell thunderstorms coming across, the radar lighting up. All of the indicators are there for some areas to receive the very bad end of a tornado threat. Seriously, this could be a real big problem, and people need to be paying attention to their phone, to your local radio station if you're out in the car, if you have Sirius XM, that's not necessarily going to cut it. I don't think they do EAS stuff locally. I might be wrong, but I do know that your local radio station, whether it's news talk, country rock, adult contemporary, whatever it is, have it on and just make sure you're paying attention. Get those alerts enabled back on your smartphone if you've turned them off because you're aggravated by them. Today's the day to be aggravated by them, all right? Got to keep you alive, got to keep you safe. And you're going to need all the warning you can get, especially as these develop and we get closer to nighttime, and then these are going ongoing. So just you know, pay attention, all right? That's the simplest thing that you can do, and then be ready to take very quick action as things unfold. You see the squall line develops out of it. The supercells, everything becomes linear. Eventually, instead of discrete supercells, which you can see the radar Picking up some of those here out in front, that's your more discrete supercell activity. And again, this is one model run hour, uh, one hourly run. This is the HRR is done every hour. Uh, but the bottom line is the threat certainly persists all through here. You need to be on top of it. That is the simplest uh, form of action that you can take. 
Now, one of the big reasons why we're getting the severe weather, other than the dynamics that are cutting in through here, is the very warm water in the Gulf of Mexico being advected. That is the horizontal movement of air. Advection, convection, of course, is when you get the vertical movement of air. And all down here, these water temperatures warmer than average. And that's the way the Gulf has been, most of the Atlantic Basin all season, of course. And that's helping to fuel those higher dew points in the area. The air gets more buoyant that way. So just showing you the connection here to the warm Gulf of Mexico. Actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf has, have not visited this in a while. Still 26 Celsius all the way through uh, out this area. Luckily, we haven't had anything to come along and take advantage of it. Hypothetically, if we had a hurricane coming up through the Caribbean and it caught a trough and we're headed in some direction like that, it would be probably still fairly formidable by the time it reached the northern Gulf Coast. Luckily, though, and it goes without saying, luckily, that has not been the case, but those water temperatures are still warm. I think my computer over here is not connected to the Internet anymore, so it's beeping at me. My Windows Vista machine. It's an old Sony Vio. I use that for graphics sometimes. Anyhow, the Gulf's still plenty warm, and even though it's not feeling any tropical activity, those high dew points that are coming in to the lower Mississippi Valley, Louisiana in particular, eastern Texas, and of course Mississippi, that is helping to fuel because the moisture is the key, the dynamics are part of that, there's lots of keys to this of course, but the warm gulf certainly adding to the situation. Now I want to show you this real quick uh, off of Twitter here, this is in Arizona yesterday, I have been in this general area a few times over the last few years in pursuit of monsoon action. This was not monsoon action, this is some of that energy that was coming across the desert southwest and it spawned a tornado that touched down. There was some minor damage across the area, various Facebook and Twitter videos from different people in the area. A rare phenomenon, it wasn't a large tornado, but still damaging and impactful nonetheless. You probably saw this already. I just wanted to point it out. Wow, you know, like, Tornadoes in Arizona in November on the bingo card, as they say, for this weekend that we just had. All right, hopefully none in the upcoming weekend. Now on to the tropics. Seriously, a couple of areas now. This one's very small. I'm going to show you this in a minute. Geographically speaking, spatially, it's small. 10% chance of development. This one, though, I'll show you, too, a different mechanism that's trying to get this going. Uh, non-tropical right now could eventually become more subtropical in nature, maybe even tropical characteristics at some point. And uh, that, that's because of the very warm water still out in parts of the Atlantic. So we have these two features here as we get to the last 10 days of November, 10%, 40%. These will not impact land to speak of, the disturbance in the Caribbean technically could impact land just because it's down there uh, but nothing organizing that we have to worry about too much I don't believe and this will be of interest only to marine uh, commercial vessel vessels and that type of thing out in the Atlantic so what do we have well not much with the first system over here or the second system whichever way you want to look at it there's the Caribbean system and by the way this one is 99 L uh, already and it's a very small feature down there. We can see it showing up on the vorticity signature. We'll use the white color again to make it pop. There it is right there. Small, compact, and yes, these tiny little systems can ramp up quickly as they move along. You just never know. And uh, the global models don't see them because the resolution isn't as high, of course. So uh, you never know. This one might surprise us. I don't have any reason to believe that it necessarily will, other than history telling me that when you get these small systems, of course they can go up and they can come back down again very quickly. Now our other feature is along this huge area of stretched out vorticity, but what it looks like is going to happen, and I'll show you this on the GFS in a minute, is this trough that's sitting out here is going to lift out, is going to leave this low pressure area behind, and it's going to sort of pinch off and be its own thing and head down in this direction where water temperatures are warmer over the Atlantic. So we might get another name storm out of all this just yet. And now we switch over to blue here so everything shows up. 
This is what the vorticity signature looks like in that little bit of a trough there on the GFS. That's the uh, area down there in the Caribbean. And you can see here, um, let's see, what did I, that's 12Z today. Yep, there we are, making sure I was at the right time frame. So if we move this out into time, first let's watch this feature right here. Very small in spatial context, right? It's a very small system. And this is the big old GFS. It's a global computer model. So again, it wouldn't surprise me if that little piece of energy might try to do something more. You see it sliding across right there, eventually headed towards Central America. So there will be some rain and associated impacts with that. But other than that, that should be about it. A very small system, but you never know. Sometimes those small ones can surprise you. Then the other feature, sitting up here along this trough axis here, that's going to pinch off over time, leave a piece of energy down here that consolidates, bundles that energy, definitely going to be over warmer water temperatures there. We're talking, I mean, look, Dr. Cowan puts on the site, you mouse over the map, you get your lat long, 23 degrees north, that's in the tropics. You know, well, technically north of 20 is not considered the deep tropics anymore, but 23 degrees north latitude, you know what? I'll take that in terms of warmth over where I am up at 34 any day. So yes, the water temperatures out here are nice and toasty, so the convective process might get to really get stoked down there. It doesn't really do too much, and then it does there. So we're going to have to watch this. This will be really interesting. Again, only of interest to marine concerns out there, but it just might be that we get another name storm out of this, and off it goes up into the Atlantic. And before people start saying, oh, they are just naming it to pad their numbers and whatever, I'm showing you the literal meteorology and everything behind it. It forms off of an old trough axis there, non-tropical. They acknowledge that in the National Hurricane Center outlook, potentially becoming tropical. And I'll just have to show you, there are skeptics out there, and I understand that. But to think that there's an agenda behind it, there's not one that I know of. And I know a lot of these people personally. You look at the meteorology, the meteorology is there. And it is possible in the model guidance, because remember, that's just what the computer model is saying. That's not reality. But we'll look at this in about five days. Maybe we get vents out there. Maybe we don't. But another shot, nevertheless. Now, of course, this week's going to be a big travel week. It looked like last week, I talked about this in my very last update, that was on Friday, that we might see a pretty big impactful weather system, maybe even generating some uh, big lake effect snows up here along Erie and Ontario. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case this time around. It's mainly due to the lack of truly cold air coming into the nation right now more of a zonal type flow where everything's just come, kind of coming in from west to east instead of northwest to southeast out of Canada. Oops, I moved me. Like that. And so when you lock up the cold air and you don't have those temperature gradients involved with the other dynamics, the jet stream and whatnot, subtropical jet, you just don't get the big storms. Now you can still get your really nasty uh, mid-latitude storms like we're going to get in the south here with today's severe weather problem, certainly, but a big winter storm, no, not yet. So we put this into motion. There's the severe weather, there's the low pressure there. Look at that classic comma shape. I'll outline it in blue here. And you're just not getting the coldest of the air involved. So the dynamics just aren't there to deepen this and all the other parameters that are needed to get a big lake effect event. Lake effect showers, but not enough cold air uh, you can see in the lee of the lakes right through here, um, come Wednesday afternoon, instead of lake effect snow, cold lake effect rain. And a good soaking rain for areas of the east, by the way, which we all need. I saw a discussion out of um, Weather Service Mount Holly, New Jersey. Jersey's going get to get in on some heavy rain. A good deal of the I-95 corridor. Now, the problem, though, is we need the rain, but this is a major travel period by every mode possible, right? Planes, trains, and automobiles. What a classic movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And this is the time of year where that is very prevalent, especially in the east here. Lots of people are going to be traveling. So today, tomorrow, into Wednesday, there will be delays. You know the, the drill, two hours to get to the airport, you know, get there two hours ahead of time. 
leave time for shenanigans, as we call it. And please, I know it's easy for me to say, be patient. You're going to have troublesome weather, we'll just call it that, uh, Wednesday morning in some major hub areas. And even down here, Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, and then the smaller regionals like Wilmington, where I am, Fayetteville, Columbia, Charleston, maybe. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta should clear out by Wednesday morning. But air travel on Wednesday is going to be, it could be worse. All right, let's look on the bright side. It could be worse. And, um, yeah, good luck with it. I'm not traveling anywhere. My daughter's coming home from grad school from East Carolina University, and that should be an easy trip from Greenville, hopefully. Right? So big day today for severe weather. Again, you got to pay attention, as I said earlier. And this is such a true thing. We are distracted. Everything changes on this device and the stuff that you follow every second. And you just got to sometimes put all that down and then pick up the weather part. You know what I mean? Pay attention. The people in your region that you trust, again, the local radio station is always a good idea because they can break in and tell you what's up and make sure those emergency alert messages do come through on that smartphone. I think you can disable them. I don't. I mean, I want to know when the aliens are coming or whatever right? Like Independence Day? Eh, yeah, that's being hyperbolic. But seriously, you have to be ready for the real world, which is this severe weather situation, and we want to keep you safe. Because if you're not safe and you're not around, you don't view my videos. And without that, you know, I'd still do this, but it's better with you on the other side. It really is. All right, so that'll be it from me for the week. Happy Thanksgiving in advance to all of you. Do travel safe. And we will do this again next Monday. And we're going to talk about what's coming up in the off season. I'll look ahead a little bit again towards what we will look for in 2024. And then a couple of really exciting announcements that I'll have as we end hurricane season shortly thereafter and head into next year. All right. So again, you guys have a great rest of your week from all of us at Hurricane Track. My family, my literal family and my Hurricane Track family to yours. Have a great Thanksgiving. I'll talk to you again in a week.